Hey guys, so I just got back from the theater from an early screening of Tenant, uh, the new Christopher Nolan movie. Uh, like a lot of people, I'm a big Christopher Nolan fan. I've been for years upon years. He's one of the best directors out there. I'm not. I'm not a fan of every movie he makes. I don't like bow down to him. Like and think everything he makes is a masterpiece. But I do like him as a director. Um, you know, even his movies, I like. Uh, not as much like I, I I seem to be only 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 person didn't care that much for or didn't love Dunkirk, but I still can appreciate it. It's a really well made movie. Um, he is a guy who anytime you see his name attached to anything, you want to go see it. I want to go see it because it's like I want to see what he does next. And there's always like this shroud of mystery when it comes to a lot of his movies. I like that that fact too because you don't know what to expect out of his movies and I like that he kind of goes and does different things he's not doesn't do the exact same movie over and over and over again even though his movie has have the same themes and kind of have, have some tropes that I have grown to expect from his movies but I I do like him as a director I really fucking like him as a director and this movie looked like another Christopher Nolan kind of film or it's like trippy, I don't know what the fuck is going on exactly, but I'm like, this looks really cool though, it's got a really great cast, uh, I know Christopher Nolan has been adamant to put this movie out in the theaters, he was not going to put this out on demand, even though a lot of people were asking him to do it, he was like, I'm not doing it, and he, I give him credit, he's fucking hell bent on putting this film out in the theaters, and he did. And I don't know how well this movie's gonna do, so fuck. I it, there was a little bit of an audience, decent audience with the people I saw, and uh, hell, even before I get into the movie, I do want to talk about the theater experience that I had with this movie because it was one hell of a fucking theater experience. Because I get there, movie, the commercials are playing. And I've said this, uh, I think, a week ago, but uh, uh, we've got a lot less trailers and commercials than I did before the pandemic, so that's a fucking plus. And commercials played, they played them all through, and they were about to start the previews, and then all of a sudden, there's a blank screen, and no, no visuals, no video, but all sound. There's I for so throughout the whole previews I heard nothing but the sound of the previews, but not the visuals of the previews. I got the Wonder Woman trailer and I think uh, something with a box. Uh, I don't know something about a box or something like that. A hand in a box or something. I don't know. I did like I, I got the Saint Mild trailer, the Wonder Woman trailer, uh, and then Infidel trailer. And that's I was able to distinguish some of those from just the audio, which is kind of funny. That shows you how much I go to the fucking theaters. Uh, and, but some of them I didn't understand. There was a couple I was like, what the fuck was that? Um, but anyways, yeah, like, we had no video going. And then, like, everybody, of course, was going out and telling them, can you please fucking fix this? And it you could tell that they were working on it while the trailers were going on because they would shut off the trailers for the sound of the trailers for a few seconds. And then the trailer, the sound of the trailers would go back on and there still was no fucking video. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? And so finally they get the video to start, uh, right before the movie, like the last commercial, the last preview was play about, was about to finish. And the movie was about to start. They start up the video but there's no fucking sound. <laughs> I'm not making this up. This is what happened. There was no sound. So when the movie started, there was all video, but no sound. <laughs> and it was like the first two minutes, like first two minutes, like there was no sound, but there was video and I could see what was going on. Uh, so that was a little frustrating. So somebody had to go out there and tell them, uh, there's still no sound, but there's video. So, after like maybe about two minutes, the sound came on, and I was like, "Okay, I guess I missed you know a couple minutes of sound." Oh well, fuck it, that's fine. And I was like, "I was just gonna sit here and enjoy the rest of this movie." Well, then 
<laughs> right within like three minutes of the movie, uh, the beginning of the movie, the movie just stopped. And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> like, at that point, they just decided to restart the movie with video and sound. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll give them that credit. Like, at least they tried to like let us watch the whole movie experience as a whole. Now that I've talked about that, what do I think about Tenant? I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck to think about Tenet. <laughs> I don't know what... This is a movie that I am going to have to watch more than a few times. Because this movie is really pretty. It's a really visually stunning movie. It's a really well-acted movie. It's got a different story. If I, like a different kind of story that I've never seen done before. But I'm not entirely sure what the fuck I just saw. <laughs> like, honestly, I have no idea. Like, I had my mom, I was talking to her on my way home. Like, she's like, try to describe this movie. I said, I can't. Like, even trying to describe this movie is hard to do. And I mean, especially when I don't know 100% what the fuck I just watched and what just actually happened. Um... Like I said, the movie is really fucking well acted. I'll give it that. Uh, John David Washington is really fucking good in the lead role. He uh, is a really good actor. Like, everything I've seen him so far, and his, he, it's shown that he can act his ass off, and he's really charming and really convincing as a lead role. And, uh,. He, I love the fact that his character in this movie, he, he doesn't have a name. I didn't notice until, like, I, did, I found this out right before the movie started. He has no name. His character has no name in this movie. That makes sense to me. I, it kind of does make sense to me because uh, he, you know, this, he's a CIA agent who, you know, you don't, they're not supposed to know the real names. And he doesn't really ever ha uh, reveal his name. His Name in the movie is the protagonist. They literally call him the protagonist. I'm not making that shit up. Uh, that was kind of funny and kind of different. I uh, got uh, uh, the, 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 the guy who played Edward. Dead deal was his name. Ah, uh, 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 was his name? He, yeah, the guy who played Edward in the Twilight movies. Uh, he was good in this movie too. Uh, Fucking goddamn it! I'm sorry. I had to. I'm forgetting his name. Robert Pattinson. There you go. Jesus Christ! I can't believe it took me that long to remember his name. Uh, is uh, basically the guy that works with John David Washington throughout this movie, and like he has a big role in this movie, uh, a big part in this movie. Um, also, that blonde girl Elizabeth Debicki. I don't know if I'm saying her name right. Uh, the Bicky, who is the main girl in this movie, who's Kenneth Branagh's wife, uh, she was really good. I like her. She, like, the only other movie I remember, I was like, I've never seen her in something, and then I rec recognized her. It's like, she's that girl from Widows, where she played almost the exact same fucking role of, like, this poor woman who has an abusive husband who's a fucking asshole to her. And I'm like, man, this girl, like, is going for some, like, keeps being stuck typecasted as, like, the same role. And, oh, yeah, she was the villain in uh, The Man from Uncle. She was great in that. She's a really good actress. I really like her. She was really good, and I uh, definitely felt for her and wanted the uh, good things that happened to this character by the end of the fucking movie, because this poor girl, shit this poor girl goes through being married to Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh is one of the best parts of this fucking movie. Probably the best. He's awesome as a villain. He's, like, the main villain in this movie. Uh, who is really good. Like, he's really good at playing a villain. Uh, and I really enjoyed the hell out of him in this movie as the villain. Uh, fuck, you, know, you have people like Michael Caine make a cameo. Uh, who very briefly one scene cameo. I know there's a bunch of people I know that I... Clemency, Clemency Posey, Posey, what was she in? Fuck, Clemency Posey was that girl. Oh, she was the Ford Delacour and fucking Harry Potter. I said, that's right. I knew I recognized her in something. I thought she, I thought she was the girl from uh, uh, the Warriors Bastards. No, that's the girl from uh, the Harry Potter. Like, oh, yeah. All right. Uh, Ford Delacour. That's, yeah, she's the girl that uh, uh, John David Washington's character goes to 
to find out first about the tenant organization that this whole movie's surrounded about or all about. Um, she's really good. Uh, like I said, she's really good in this movie. Uh, in a brief time, like I said, Michael Caine, you got Michael Caine, you got, uh, who was it, Hamish Patel, ain't that the guy that, he was in, uh, fucking Inception too. A lot of, a lot of big names that have been in, uh, Inception, in a lot of, uh, you know, he was, oh yeah, he was in, uh, oh yeah, he was in, yes, that's the guy from yesterday. I'm, man, I feel like a fucking asshole. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that was the guy from yesterday. I thought that was a guy from Inception. Man, not, man, what the fuck? I'm feeling racist as hell. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm very tired. Uh, but yeah, he was uh, uh, popped up in this movie, the main guy from yesterday. Uh, the visuals of this movie are really cool. It's really unique. I will not deny like the visuals and the action in this movie is very unique. I've never seen stuff like this before. Uh, it's... The best way to describe it, because you, you know to see the trailer, you know, where they're talking about inverted time and all that shit. It's a whole movie about that and about time travel, but it's through inverted time. There's a lot of, like, action sequences going in fucking reverse and, like, car chases going on in reverse and uh, fights going on in reverse. And it's fucking weird and really crazy or, like... What the fuck? There's like a war scene pretty much going on at the end of the movie, like a bunch of explosions going on in reverse. Uh, it's like insane. <laughs> like it's really like a spectacle to watch. Like I'm like, god damn, this is like crazy. Like I, I can't. I like just to sit back as a movie fan, just watching this on a big screen. Like this is kind of cool. Um, but again, I, this is a movie that I will have to kind of watch again to see if I appreciate it because also at the same time I, I, I can't decide if it's the movie's fault or if that I was as confused or it's the theater's fault because I don't know if the sound quality was that great but also at the same time if this movie has a lot of the same problems that no one has with his other movies. I don't know what his obsession with is having characters speak with mask on like with uh i know he did it in dunkirk dark knight rises it's shit like that where it's hard to understand especially when you got a big giant loud booming score from hans zimmer which is really great his score is great of course it is uh and like a lot of times the, the biggest part of this movie is like when they're trying to explain stuff through dialogue like big important plots of parts of this movie and through dialogue and sometimes you can't fucking understand what the fuck they're saying because either they're covered with masks have masks on their face or they have a thick the people that are given very important dialogue are given is given to the people that have very thick accents they can't really understand what the fuck they're saying or they really talk really quietly Throughout this movie, there's characters that are just talking like this. I'm like, dude, speak up! <laughs> like, I can't understand. Like, goddamn. Like, I like I, I know I'm hard of hearing, but I was like, goddamn, speak the fuck up. Like, I'm uh, like, and so that makes it even more confusing. If you're missing, like, key parts of dialogue in this movie, it makes it hard to follow sometimes. Uh, because, yeah, this is a movie you cannot fucking not be paying attention. I promise you that. If you are not paying attention, you are going to be lost. <laughs> like, this is like, I got, I was fine with, people said that about Inception. This movie, I felt like, maybe went a little too far. Like, he just went a little too crazy with, like, how complex this movie gets. Is there's this shit that was just going right over my head. Like, I enjoyed the movie for your experience itself, but I, like, I can't decide if I love this movie or... It, like, it was like, I, I... On one point, I do love it as an experience, but also at the same time, like, I do want to just watch this again so I can see if I really appreciate it as a movie and as a whole, like, as a story as a whole. I love that, like, I do love that Nolan tries stuff that's never been done before. I give him credit on that. Like, he doesn't do the exact same thing over and over and over again. Like, even though he has tropes that, like I said, have that you see in a lot of his movies or, or in this movie too. But, I like I said, 
it's a weird. This is one of the weirdest reviews I've ever had because I'm like, I don't know. Like, do I recommend it? Yeah, I, I kind of do. Like, I want people to get their own opinion, but I recommend, please, do not fucking go up to the bathroom. Don't go. The movie's about to start. Go to do what you gotta do. Get, get your drinks. Go get your popcorn. Go get go to the bathroom. Do not fucking get up to go do something because you are going to be fucking lost because I fucking pay attention. I was sitting for the whole majority of the movie and I still was lost. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, this is a movie that I have a feeling like, kind of like Inception where you're going to have to watch it more than one viewing to really appreciate it, I think. I think that's the best way to describe it. Um I probably would do it. I, 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 because of the pandemic, I don't know if I'll be going to the theater and go see it again. Uh, it, like, it's not the greatest idea to go see a movie more than once right now. But yeah, like I guess I, I do recommend seeing it. If you're an Nolan fan, I'm sure you'll love it. I, I just don't know what or where this movie places among my f- movies of the year. The rest of the movies of the year, whether this is one of my favorites, definitely not one of them. Oh, it's not even close to my like. It's not even. I will never say this is one of the worst movies of the year. Hell no, it's not. Uh, far from it. Like it's well acted, well directed, just very fucking confusing. But like I said, that might be me. <laughs> like I said, it's a movie I felt like I needed a nap afterwards. <laughs> uh, it's an experience. Uh, yeah. Uh, I recommend it. I do kind of recommend it. Like I said, I, I hope people do go see this. I want to, this would be a pretty cool movie to see in IMAX. Um, you know, like the 72 millimeter, but I think only like six, only a few feeders, handful of feeders are doing the 72 millimeter. Uh, but I would love to see this in IMAX. That would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, uh, that's as far as Tenet. Like I said, I had no previews because I had audio but no video of the fucking previews. Uh, so that's just Tenet. I don't know if there's anything else coming out this weekend, which that's fine by me. Uh, I think next, the week after that, uh, this coming week is the Heart, the Broken Hearts Gallery. And other than that, I don't know what the fuck's coming out in September. Other than Greenland. I think that's the only other big movie. Uh, I don't know why. Like... What the hell theater is going to put out for the month of September? We'll see. But, uh, yeah, that's as far as the trailers and tenant goes. Uh, and until then, I will talk to you guys later.